I'm Bet Naughton with a few adaptations for gross motor skills. To build off the skills in the hand and the large muscles of the body, I often use uh, these big hole punchers, which are great because they really take a lot of pressing. They also give the student um, a shape, so if they don't have the ability to draw stars independently, they can use a puncher to create their shapes and a pattern for their art making. So these are great to be using. They can be used with the hand or to develop the uh, inside part of the hand, they can be used with the pinchers like so. Using hole punchers are also great. They require a little bit more pressure and skill, um, but they're great to develop the arm and the hand as well. Scissors are another important tool we must look at. Um, we have everything from uh, maximum assist, so this can just help the student guide their hand by pressing down. They're spring-loaded. This is another spring-loaded option, which is easier when we don't have a lot of uh, hand strength. Allows you just to squeeze those, or a paraprofessional can squeeze the back part while the child holds the front part and uh, learns how to use the scissors. A smaller one that works the inside of the hand muscles and then you also have the ones with the extra loop on them to uh, force correct finger position. When it comes to drawing materials, uh, sometimes I'll use these crayons, which uh, a lot of students have what we call a tripod grasp or a doorknob hold, and they want to uh, grab a crayon this way. Alternatively, they can also be used by putting them on the fingers to develop some muscle tone that way. There are many different uh, types of crayons out in the market, so I suggest that you try a few of them to see which works best for your students. Some grow on very creamy, almost like an oil pastel, and others uh, automatically sharpen and roll up so that they have an easier time using those. When it comes to painting, a lot of times students with gross motor skills don't have the eye-hand coordination to hit the blue every time they're trying to hit the blue. So sometimes I will do this where I put a, a piece of paper across to isolate one color. It also helps students with cognitive deficits. Or maybe I'll use something like this from the replacement paints so that they can isolate and get just into the one color. On the topic of painting, uh, there's many different brushes and adaptations to brushes. So this is just a simple wide brush that has a chunk of uh, modeling clay around it and you can use it that way. Or uh, you can use a clothespin and a sponge. This is an egg handle shaped brush which helps uh, force the hold. Here's another adaptation just using a cork in the end of a paintbrush. Or you can even just put a styrofoam ball on a brush to help uh, students have something bigger to hold on than the handle of a regular paintbrush. A shaving cream brush is also another great adaptation and if that is still too uh, hard for a child to use they can also roll paint on. I keep a bin of uh, pattern rollers uh, for students who can't uh, draw their own background or their own stripes in the background they could roll one on by dipping this into paint. Other adaptations for gross motor skills I like to use is a clothesline at the back of the room to clip artwork on um, as the glue dries so that if it's hanging in the room, students have to use their pinchers to develop uh, and hang artwork or they have to reach up above their head which builds trunk stability to add as they hang the artwork. So as I adapt, I uh, showed you some tools. These are adaptations to actual lessons and doing a lesson off of uh, the famous artist who use hearts a lot in their artwork. It would be hard for a student with cognitive deficits and some gross motor skills to draw a heart on their own. So there's two ways you can do it. You can give them a heart to trace if they can't make one independently. But sometimes if they just paint that and then paint the background, they'll actually paint over their heart that they already did um, as they're trying to paint. So a good way to prevent that is to actually give them, say, both parts as you cut out a tracer and give them this to put down first and they paint to contain that. As you can see some paint gets on here and then when they go to do the background you put down the counter image here so that they can paint around it without getting it on their image. Uh, whenever I'm working with students with gross motor deficits sometimes I'll give them 
a tracer if they can't draw independently, and I'll also let them work a little larger scale than their able-bodied peers. So you can give a tracer made out of oak tag, or you can make a thicker one out of uh, foam or even heavy cardboard. If they can't create patterns independently, they can use pre-made patterns from paper or wallpaper, or they can create them using texture plates, which is another great pressing activity to build up those gross motor muscles. Here's another uh, way to adapt a lesson, a simple still life. If they can't do the patterns, they could peel stickers and put them on, which is a great fine motor activity I'll teach you, or they can use pre-made patterns. Um, doing a lesson on fiber arts, uh, the able-bodied students might be able to uh, work with the fine thread here, but it might be a little more difficult for uh, students with special needs. So if I had this requirement where they had to do three different stitches, I would scaffold back the project and make it just one stitch for my students with special needs. The first thing I would do would be to create um, one with thicker, uh, I believe it's warp thread on there, and I would also use a thicker fabric or a yarn to weave with. If that was still too difficult, I might color code them blue, yellow, blue, yellow, and give them something uh, a little bit thicker to weave with so that it's easier for them to actually go um, over and under with as they weave. Again, it's just about fiber arts. If uh, weaving is too hard for them to do, you could also just have them put uh, different textures of fiber down and fabrics down to create their artwork that way. Giving students choice is very important. So in a lesson about musical instruments in my classroom, if a student can't independently draw, then I let them have a variety of different tracers. Uh, or maybe they play the violin uh, in music and they want to do a violin, I would make a violin tracer for them. So instead of just saying, here is a guitar, trace it, if you give them a choice of what instrument they would like to play, their artwork becomes more meaningful. Thank you for watching.